welcome everybody to Lewis Cass uh, School Board Trustees meeting today, May 13th. We'll get started uh, with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, roll call. We are here uh, tonight. Obviously, constricted by the amount of visitors that we're allowed to have on site. Hopefully, we have a lot of people here live watching through Walton Webcasting, a local business that always helps support Lewis Cass here. Um, first thing on here, superintendent's report. If you want to get started, Tim. Thank you, Max. Uh, one of the things I want to welcome you guys to would be our new Lewis Cass Early Learning Academy. And if we take a look here, I just want to show you our, our new website. Here's our new website, and it can be found on our Lewis Cass website underneath schools. But if you take a look, um, we're planning on starting this August the 3rd. Um, at least that is our intended start date, so I'm hoping that on August the 3rd we can start everything back up. And if you take a look through here, it tells all about our Learning Academy programs. It will give you the cost and the description of each. So you can take a look at all those. Um, if you would like to sign up, you can just go in and click on your enrollment. And here you can enroll through our sandbox system. And pretty simple, pretty easy. And Angela Johnson is here tonight, and um, she will be in charge of our Lewis Cass Early Learning Academy. But I just want to introduce that to you guys. I know something we've been planning on. Um, it is for... Uh, kids who are infants, toddlers, and so on and so forth. We will also have availability for after school care uh, and before school care. We will open up at 6 a.m. and then get 5.30 p.m. We will also help transport students to and from school as to if they are school-aged children. So a big kickoff for that. Uh, we're doing an awful lot right now to get that prepared for our community. It's a, it's a big demand. So. I'll let you guys know that we're going to start that. So, Rick? And there is limited spaces, is that correct? Or we will have how many total spaces? Well, it's going to vary by age group because you can only have so many children based on their yes. age. So, operating during the day. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, children, okay, so we can take children six weeks through our four year olds. We'll have them there all day. So, we're looking at 72 children that can be there during the day. So the, to reiterate what she said, we can take children, and it varies from the infants to uh, four-year-olds, looking around 76 students or 76 kids we can take at the academy. And this will be at the uh, Galveston, which will be old Galveston Elementary, which we now call the Lewis Cass Polytechnic Center or Academy. And uh, it will just be on the very west side. So looking forward to helping our community out because I know it's well needed. So yeah, this has been planned for some time, and I'm glad to see this going into place, especially with the current situation where there was a lot of restrictions for parents uh, being able to take their children places. So glad this will be an avenue for us to be able to connect. So we will be sending out uh, all calls as well um, to give everybody updates, at least a monthly update where we are at with the Early Learning Academy. So we expect more to come out on that, but uh, if you want to have anything on the inside, go ahead and go to our lewiscast.net, and you'll find it there. Website live. And the website is live, that's correct. <clears throat> Any other questions about the academy? Okay, we'll move on to our finances. Uh, every month we go through our finances, and this is what we call our fund report. And um, as we go through, our, our funds have uh, stabilized, if not increased, in, in certain areas. Uh, still taking a look at our overall cash balance. Uh, we're, we're still sitting well with our rainy day, about 600000 Looking at our operations fund at 785000 or yeah, 785000 uh, Going through education fund, 1.3, a little higher than normal. Um, but right now, I, I think we're doing well on our funds. We're uh, right where we should be um, with our projected versus where it was when we started out in 2015. Coming till now, yeah, we're... We're, we're doing well. I think you guys have done a great job. and So this means our school can do more things with more money. That's all that means. So. And then the last thing we had would be talking about uh, some bond information that uh, Matt Llewellyn will be referring to. Uh, 
Yep. So, Matt. So if you want to launch the presentation. Uh, before we start the presentation, one thing I would like to make clear. Uh, the reason for having this televisor live tonight, I guess, uh, was to make sure we we're being transparent. We've said from the beginning that we want to be transparent with our community. And before we start any uh, major projects or any discussions, we want the community to be on board and aware of what's going on. So what most of you don't know that even as the last project construction bond completed, we were already discussing as a board uh, what the next thing is going to be to continue to prel propel Lewis Cass schools, uh, not just past what we were um, without the investment uh, of the last bond, but what can lead us uh, to be better than everybody else in our community. So we started discussing those things. Uh, there were certain facilities that we knew we would have to update. There were certain things just for maintenance and not being addressed for decades. We knew there was stuff that was going to have to be taken care of, but we also want to look for other areas that we could, again, uh, make ourselves better and, and make Lewis Cass a, a better place that, that people want to be. So. Um, Another thing that we considered, as uh, was shown in the previous slide, sorry, uh, there were some bonds that were going to be rolling off at the end of 2020. So this is an area where we can continue to reinvest in Lewis Cass and be prepared. And that's why we're doing this now at this time to where we can take advantage of that roll off and go right into the next investment into Lewis Cass. So you'll see some of these bonds that uh, were done over the last uh, 15 years and the most recent uh, bond, of course, there, the lease rental bond in 2017. But some of those other bonds are rolling off, so this is a time for us to continue to reinvest. Um, this is a list of, this is a start of the list of the projects that we'll go through that is our intention to invest in in this project. Uh, we're going to be acquiring some more land to be able to take on some of the projects that's going to be discussed later. Uh, there's some safety concerns and some inefficiencies in land that we currently own uh, with the ditch at the elementary we want to address. There's some additional backup generators are needed, not just both at the corporate office, but at other buildings, which you'll see later in the list. At the elementary school, we hope to update the restrooms, add additional water fountains, update water fountains. Uh, we hope to upgrade the gymnasium, which hasn't been touched for a while. Uh, there's a lot of the projects in here, like just HVAC, uh, not just at the elementary, but at the high school that you'll see a lot of investment with because they're systems that are 20, 30 plus years old, and they just require the attention now so we can become more efficient and make better use of our energy dollars that are out there. Um, a lot of curb appeal, literally, uh, replacing a lot of the curbs and sidewalks around campus. We are looking at adding additional classrooms at the elementary, uh, expanding and upgrading the elementary cafeteria. We're also looking at doing additional upgrades in technology, which especially in times like this show us is necessary. At the high school is where you'll see the largest amount of investment, uh, upgrading the auditorium stage curtains, uh, big price tag like I mentioned before and replacing the HVAC system there, uh, new signage, New roof, again, a large dollar amount that you won't necessarily see pulling up to the uh, building, but if it's not taken care of, then it will deteriorate the rest of the building. Then some athletic complexes, some upgrades at the football stadium, uh, additional sport complexes that are needed as we continue to look at uh, taking athletics into our junior high and expanding our high school athletics. Uh, new maintenance building to handle a lot of the additional stuff that our maintenance staff is doing as well as addressing bus repairs and best needs. More water fountains at the high school. Uh, replacing exhaust fans that's very similar to the HVAC systems. Uh, new bus parking areas uh, within the facility and uh, looking at maybe upgrading some of the logistics even of the uh, I guess it would be the north side of our high school and maybe adding some additional parking there. Um, and again, investing into new technology at the high school, more curbs throughout campus and sidewalks, adding classrooms at the junior and senior high as well. Uh, there's a lot of old windows, leaky windows. We're looking at replacing those on the junior and senior high school, uh, upgrading the high school lockers, resurfacing the tennis courts, and an asphalt uh, runner across the football field. So obviously, this all costs money, right? So. How does that affect us? This, this shows big picture how the financing rates are looked at. We actually looked at many other scenarios in this. We're just trying to, to create the 
best avenue for Lewis Cass to do this investment without taking on any unnecessary uh, in high interest rates or uh, long interest rates or long durations for interest rates. So we've looked at several scenarios and working with um, the professionals at Baker Tilly and uh, what we've come up with is what you see here, um, which this shows our, our, our project based upon the current rates right now that we're seeing on the bond market and it also gave us a worst case scenario if those happen to go up by one percent what we could be looking at. Uh, we're hopeful actually as we've seen in the last week that bond rates will go down um, and we can actually have better rates than what we see here but we wanted to show uh, the reasonable current rate as well as what the rate would look like if if it happened to go up by a percent in the next several months. So what does that mean to you personally? Uh, that, that was a big picture tax dollar across the whole corporation, but what does it mean to you personally? This gives a breakdown of what that bond cost would be. Uh, what our bond council has basically told us is that the average home in our district is around that 94.8 homestead, 94,000 in value. So what you would see is, uh, you would see roughly somewhere around a $40 increase in your property taxes to be able to take on this additional project. Uh, obviously, if you're in a higher value home or a lower value home, you can see the impacts there on the chart. I will mention we are getting through this quickly, but this will all be made available um, later. It'll be actually posted after this on the website. So if you want to look into any of these slides, they will be made available. So to give you an idea of our historic tax rates, uh, kind of pops, populates there from 2012 to 2016. Uh, it shows that we've ranged as high as 94 cents um, and as low as 79 cents back in uh, 2012 per thousand dollars in assessed value. Um, what we're looking at now, our current rate is actually 98 cents, if you want to move to the next slide. We're currently at 98 cents per thousand. Um, and what we looked at as a board in, in making the best choice for our school district is we didn't want to really be above those people around us or at least the ones closest around us so we wanted to uh, excel but not blow everybody's budget or blow everybody's pocketbook so we're currently at 98 cents we kind of set a bar for our board that we don't want to go over a dollar ten and that's the solid black line that you see on the slide there but you'll notice that there's many others around us that are already higher pioneer school corporation delphi Clinton Central, um, and then we set the bar that we're still going to be right there with those guys, but we're not going to get up there with the Westerns or Logan Sport Community Schools. So we've just kind of set that threshold that uh, we, we're not going to cross that as far as burden is concerned for, for our district. So here's some implementation dates. Um, we're actually not required by law to even um, bring this to anybody until June 3rd, but with the current situation and COVID and not being able to allow so a lot of people in here, again, we wanted to be fully transparent, let you know this well above June 3rd when we'll actually have drawings and we'll have uh, more information and more detail to present to the public. But we wanted to get this out there and get it out uh, for anybody to ask questions. Uh, it'll be much more helpful when we get those conceptual drawings in place, but until then, uh, we'll continue to work. But as you can see up here on our timeline, that's what's going on right now. The architects are just coming up with some conceptual ideas based upon the budget that they know they cannot exceed uh, in both the civil engineering for our sports complexes and drainage, as well as for the building uh, upgrades with our architects. So they're going to be continuing to work on that beyond now, but from now until June 3rd, uh, they'll be working on the big picture conceptuals. At that time, our intention is on June 3rd to hold a public meeting to make everybody aware. We plan to hold this at the auditorium, um, and we plan to allow what the state allows us to uh, offer at that time, um, as many to fit in a public area as possible. We're not going to turn people away, but what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to transition to different places so we can minimize the amount of people in one specific area and still maintain those social distancing. But we're gonna allow people to be in there uh, at the auditorium among other places in our building on June the 3rd. Uh, our intention right now, this will be publicized later, is also to do this on June the 4th and June the 9th before our final date of uh, the public hearing, which is on June 10th. <coughs> um, beyond that, 
we would like to get your feedback, responses. If you have any questions, uh, you have any comments you'd like to share, again, there's not a whole lot of information yet. We're just trying to get out in front of you now. That way, come June 3rd, when you get this information, if there are questions you have, uh, you've got a means to connect with us. So obviously, there's a lot of you that'll see us out in public. Feel free to ask us questions then. Also, uh, our emails will be made available. They're already on the uh, corporation website, but they'll also be available the nights of June 3rd and 4th 9th and 10th um, for you to reach out and ask questions via email as well um, but then the rest of these are just big picture dates on when we see this bond process happening but this is really a two to three year project so we're sitting here you know in 2020 and we're not looking for this project to be complete until the end of 2022 could you go back to the tax rates for me I want to just make sure that we highlight that Matt you did a good job of, of covering things but uh, just wanted to focus on this as well to understand that the the forty dollars if you look at the ninety four thousand eight hundred dollar homestead which is the average for Cass County uh, we're rounding up to forty dollars there where it's thirty seven ninety eight which is annually so I know we just got done paying the first installment of property taxes so it would essentially be a forty dollar hit to reinvest back into Lewis Cass schools if you have a, a homestead in that ninety five thousand dollar range uh, and then uh, down a few boxes then it talks about uh, agricultural land obviously we're blessed to live in God's country where we have a lot of farm ground around here so it's an additional dollar 66 an acre uh, for those landowners in the area uh, which impacts a lot of people in, in our district so if you have any questions about this uh, as Matt alluded to we're on step three of about 200 and so it's a good chance to ask questions but this is how it affects each and every one of us in the pocketbooks. So we want to make sure that you understand that uh, accordingly. Anything else from the board? Okay. Matt, great job. Great, great job. Okay, no. All right. <clears throat> With that, we'll move on to the consent agenda items, which include I know everybody's already had a chance to review our, which Tim should, our statement of funds as well as our payroll claims. I saw Tim had a few questions that were answered. If, uh, if nothing else, I will entertain a motion to approve our consent agenda items. Second. Ryan, Tim. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay, this is, appears that it was part of the consent agenda items, but we actually do need to approve the resolution policy 8416, correct? Yeah, it should be H1, correct? No, it's not. It's under the consent agenda items, but we will approve oh. it with, or separate from. Okay. Yours is I think it skipped the letter. That oh, did it? Okay. <clears throat> so, um, if you don't mind, yeah, go ahead. Matt, I'm going to talk about this just for a minute so the resolution that this is is actually turns into a policy 8416 remember when the COVID-19 had started we had to adopt a resolution giving the superintendent power to make financial decisions uh, other decisions in general um, to keep the school still running and for our students and for our community so what this does is now just goes from a resolution into a full policy the wording is almost identical I'll I'll go to it here real quick if I can find it. So here is actually the, the policy itself. Like I said it's very identical to what we had before. It just now becomes policy. So if something ever happens again, we don't have to hold a special board meeting. We just go right to the board policy and it allows the superintendent to have the power to authorize whatever we need to authorize from academics to financials to transportation or whatever the case may be. So. Um, I just thought it would be better to have it as a policy rather than a resolution because once it's policy, it's policy. So my recommendation is to accept policy 8416. So moved. Second. Ryan made the motion. Amy. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Now, I would also ask if you guys are not opposed to this, we've, this, we've approved the resolution before. 
we've also now approved the policy. If, uh, I'd like to waive the uh, second. the second reading and go directly to the vote. So moved. Rick, made the motion. Second. Ryan, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay. All right. I will let you uh, start with number three there. Sure. On this one, uh, I, I have worked with Mr. Engel a lot, and uh, it is my recommendation to accept his retirement with a little bit of grief uh, because he does do an excellent job. He has, he what, at the end of this year, have 40 years in. He has taught English at multiple levels. He is teaching currently AP classes and has done an excellent job. Really appreciate all that he's done, and hopefully maybe we can do something with him long term. Uh, we can bring him back, but it's something we have to discuss at a different time. But uh, at this time, though, if you would accept uh, Mr. Stuart Ingalls' retirement letter, um, effective at the end of this school year. So what happens if we don't? Can we <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is that an option? I like that. Well, Unfortunately, it's yes. not, not an option, not an option for him at this point. It's blessed to be so. able to sneak one child in with him. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Not to, but. I had three of them. Uh, three of my children have went through, and they've been very blessed. Yeah, I know he does a great job preparing our kids for college. Uh, without a doubt, he does have very high AP scores. Yeah. He does an excellent job, so he will be missed. Well, begrudgingly, I'll accept a nomina or nomination. <laughs> yeah. They, uh, yeah. Yeah. So moved. I, I guess. I'll second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Not. All right. We do have some donations. Would like to recognize those because there's quite sure, a few this yeah. month. So what what board? Um, we had some discussion about paying extra. Oh. Thank you about paying extracurricular activities even though they weren't going to be in session for spring. With that, some suggestions that came out of let's go ahead and just pay the ECAs and if they would like to put that money back into the school itself or back into the programs, they can do so or they can keep the money. It's up to them and times like these, sometimes the money is just needed. So if they needed to keep it, they needed to keep it. If not, put it back in. And here's where a lot of them so I applaud them highly that uh, they want to put their money back into their programs or other programs they support. So uh, 10,631 was put back into the school programs. Much appreciated. Yeah, I applaud yes. those people for, yeah. I thought it was very, uh, very well done by them. I just applaud them. And I know we still have some more that will be coming in, but this is the first list and go around of the staff who decided to give back to their programs. So well appreciated. Absolutely. There's also some food, service. food services donations. Yes. I did not bring that one up here. Where is my food? There it is. <coughs> so we had uh, Walmart from Kokomo and Logosport. Rule King, McCords, Hobby Lobby, Windmill Grill, Don Pullen, Leah Henry and Family, Tyson's, Frito Lay, and Dairy Council. So, all this was uh, donated for our food distribution, and I believe we're over 16,000 meals, something like that. Where we have wow. a, a ton of meals we have sent out, and hats off to our food service program, doing quite a bit of getting those out every Tuesday. And uh, we'll continue that till the till next week or next two weeks, I guess we'll have it, and we'll take a look at our summer programs. So yeah, excellent job. All right. With that, we will go to any items from school board members, Mr. Zach. Well, obviously, thank you to Mr. Engel for 40 years of tremendous service there's a lot of impact and a lot of ripples that he's going to leave with a lot of a lot of students so that's impressive um, a big thank you to the entire staff for going through this whole episode of COVID-19 for all the patients and still trying to reach out to the kids it's just been tremendous and thank you Dr. Garland for 
your role in doing that. And then uh, Angela, we're really looking forward to the Early Learning Academy. I think it's going to be spectacular for the area. And I appreciate you stepping up to the plate and leading the charge. So looking forward to having it rolling. So thanks. Okay. Mr. Johnson. There's not a whole lot I can add to that. But I, I will. So <laughs> do, I do want to reiterate just uh, thank you, Mr. Engel, for his 40 years of uh, mentoring students, coaching students, um, teaching, uh, just the uh, incredible man that he is. I uh, really appreciate it for our family, and uh, I know a lot of other families do as well. So just wish him well, and hopefully um, I know he'll be a part of the community still and look forward to that as well. Uh, just thank him. Um, again, teachers, um, all the staff that have uh, just done the extraordinary over the past several weeks. It's uh, not been an ideal situation, so really uh, just thank them for all their efforts. I um, want to congratulate and wish well the 2020 seniors who have kind of been gypped out of the second semester of their senior year. And that's, uh, that's not a bit, it, I'm sure it's been difficult. I, can, I don't have one this year, um, but I know that a couple of you do. And it's uh, for all of those students and parents, it's, uh, it's been a, a trying time. And, I uh, wish you all the best uh, in your future endeavors, and uh, we're going to miss you all and the impact that they've had on the school. Um, just really appreciate them um, and all they've done, so wish them well. Ms. Miller. I also want to thank Mr. Engel. Um, our three sons were blessed to have him and um, just, just couldn't ask for a better teacher and a better experience. and. Um, so thank you for your service. Um, again, just want to echo um, thanks to everyone on the staff. Um, thanks to Dr. Garland for kind of spearheading this journey of uh, COVID-19. And, you know, I think we, we, we did the best. And, you know, I think we've learned a lot. And we, we realize how we can be very flexible and we can be very innovative. And, um, we just, uh, just the support of just all of the, all of the, um, everyone that works for Lewis Cass, but also just, I really want to do a special thank you to the bus drivers and to the food service people because they really reached out to our kiddos, um, you know, providing the packets, you know, connecting them back to the school, serving our kids that, that need those meals. And that's just, that's vital, vital during this time. So thank you. Mr. Lee? Yeah, I would agree. There's just a lot of behind the scenes that uh, people don't see. And, and I just definitely want to thank all of the staff, the teachers for all this e-learning. I know it's been a trying time. I've talked to a few of them, but um, my hat's off to them. I think they've done a great job. And I think uh, just got a lot of big things coming. And hopefully uh, everything just keeps getting better. Yeah. So thank you. Absolutely. Mr. Dam. Uh, nothing legally, just as we climb out of this national nightmare, I hope we all can stay positive and we move forward strongly. I'm excited what I hear you as a board, what Dr. Garland as an administrator and, and the staff, what you all are trying to do as we climb out of this difficult situation and Godspeed as we move forward. Absolutely. Dr. Garland. Sure. Uh, yeah, hats off to everybody. I know it's been quite the journey for our staff, our students, and I say staff, from food services to bus drivers to principals to just everybody in general, including the school board. Um, walking through this, keeping everybody abreast on things and being great advocates for myself and for the rest of the teachers. So a great job, a lot of decisions had to be made. Uh, classes end Friday, May 15th. I think there's a little bit of celebration there for all. So. Uh, I know the teachers uh, have done a great job, but I know this only goes so far for them. So um, hopefully we can get some more things done over the summer. And uh, we're going to continue the buddy bag, buddy bag program that we've had going on. We, uh, they build those up on Wednesday. We deliver on Thursday. So that will continue. We're looking at doing that program over the summer as well. So uh, thanks to uh, Melissa Johnson, who has done a great job of putting all together, spearheading that. So I still think that's a high need out there. And um, as always, I'll keep the community student staff updated about graduation. As soon as we know more, 
about what the governor's going to do and what we're going to do as a Cass County. I will keep all, like I said, everybody updated and hopefully we can have graduation in June. At least that's my hope. Maybe that's just a big prayer. But um, that, that's my goal. Hopefully we can have it in June. But again, I will keep you updated as we go along. So that's all I really had, Matt. Well, for me, again, I, w I will echo those comments about Mr. Engel. This was the first year any of my children were able to have him and uh, Caleb learned so much and I, I can't express that appreciation more uh, just like everybody else here. Also to Mrs. Carmel for her investment in our kiddos um, on the swim team for those years. But I guess lastly I would say that I'm excited you know as we hopefully are leaving this season um, what I see is hope as things start to relax and uh, release it, it provides hope and for me the hope for the future was shown in the last few weeks in these videos that I've seen these kiddos do boosting up our teachers for teacher appreciation week seeing those kiddos boost those uh, not just teachers but those teachers do the same thing I haven't got the chance to read or watch the mass singer one that's apparently out there this week but I've seen how creative our teachers and our kiddos can be in these times that um, it does provide hope you know it there is excitement to being back in the school don't get me wrong but it does show me how versatile our teachers and our staff can be and how creative they can be in still connecting and engaging with our kids and and making a difference because that's what they needed in this time so much appreciation and much hope going forward and that's all i have so with that i'll entertain a motion to adjourn so moved. second that all in favor aye, aye. aye.